comes in. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our CWCT orientation tonight. Um, so glad that you all could take the time to spend it with us. We have some really exciting things coming up, and I'm going to turn it over to Stephen Ryder, who is one of our um, program managers, and some of you probably already met him through email. So Stephen, if you want to take it away. Thank you, Amber, and good afternoon to everybody. I appreciate you taking the time and the interest in joining us today and to be students in the Cybersecurity Workforce Certification Training Initiative, otherwise known as, and you'll hear it several times today, CWCT. We are so pleased, believe me, to have all of you here as we kick off this first session with today's orientation. By way of introduction, you heard my name, Steve Ryder. I'm a program manager to the CWCT from the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, one of the four great universities who are collaborating to deliver this initiative. For some of you, I will be your overall program manager. Therefore, I will look forward with great anticipation in speaking with you by voice, by text, by email during these next 10 weeks. I know my colleagues as well, who will be supporting the other students, feel much the same way. There are many resources you will find available to yourself as a student in this initiative and to help you get the most out of the program and succeed even beyond your expectations. So don't be shy. We are here collectively to serve you and to assure that upon completing your studies, you are well equipped to meet the needs of the marketplace you'll eventually be working in. Let me tell you why I am personally so excited about to be part of this initiative. First, as an Army vet and a US citizen, there is a prospect of providing a free of charge, rock solid training program to all of you to help protect our national and business assets from the challenges that those bad guys out there have already caused our nation in preparing in the future. I am sure all of you have heard the damages caused by such publicized assaults, such as Colonial Pipeline, JBS Foods, Target, the state of Georgia, and so many others that we have had to suffer the consequences from such attacks. Secondly, when I many, I mean many years ago, transition from being in the army to civilian status, uh, someone by the name of Ross Perot offered me a training program to become at the time a data processing professional. Any of you remember that term? After a successful 42 year career, which I found quite rewarding, providing me opportunities to do great things that I'm real proud of, and in many ways today in serving you is a way to pay back for what Ross offered me and my family. For many who've gone through the pilot program, we have heard the courses offered are not a cakewalk. They're actually solid to college level instruction requiring hard work. Yet to the person, each of those who I spoke to, let me know the results were well worth the effort and we're excited about continuing with the next round of courses. So let's take a minute now, if we can, and maybe Chrissy, advance one slide, please, to the agenda. And I'm gonna ask you to uh, pay full attention throughout this two hour session that we have scheduled this afternoon. I think you'll find it valuable and helpful. It'll make the next 10 weeks so much more valuable and answer questions that might come up otherwise. So you've already heard from Amber and myself, Chrissy Duncan is going to kind of walk through an overview with you over the next 15 minutes after I give her the microphone. You'll hear from Matthew and, uh, and Edwina as well to talk about uh, non-attendance dates, et cetera, and, uh, and support. Then you'll get a chance to meet the faculty. I think you'll be very impressed with these uh, individuals who you will see on screen today, uh, the capabilities and at least again, the feedback I've gotten from the 
uh, pilot session on the lessons learned and the individuals offering them has been excellent. Then Chrissy will come back to share with you about both the IV Learn and the IV account system, as well as using Zoom for access. Uh, Michael uh, and as well um, John and Farina will share about the three tracks that we're offering, giving you some additional information. And then we have a special guest with us, uh, Glenn Hernandez that Rami will introduce. And then we'll have a wrap up uh, that both Amy and Chrissy will uh, orchestrate. So during the program, you'll be given an opportunity to be uh, post your questions in the Zoom chat. Uh, we will be monitoring that chat room throughout this entire orientation and therefore fully encourage you to provide us a chance to respond to any question which is relevant to today's content. Also, we will be recording today's session and you should expect an email by Friday which will provide you a YouTube link that will be sent to you if you want to go back and review any portion or the entire program in its entirety. After today, if any other questions arise, please, I underline that, please do not be shy in reaching out to myself and my colleagues, who again, who you'll have a chance to meet today, including your instructors and program managers. We are, and I say it again, here to serve you. Let me wish you all the best as we continue our program, I'm going to turn over the microphone to Chrissy Duncan, who will provide the overview. Chrissy, the microphone's yours. Thank you very much, Stephen. Let me advance here. Um, so this next part is to kind of give you a brief overview of our program. Um, some of this information you may have gotten along, your, along the way in your application process, but we just wanted to give a few reminders um, of what the CWCT program is. Um, so just as a reminder, there are three different cybersecurity training paths um, that we are offering through this program where you were admitted under one particular track. Um, and those uh, three tracks are the artificial intelligence track, the digital forensics track, and the system administration track. Um, a lot of participants have questions as to whether they can take courses outside of their track because they're interested in them, those types of things. Um, courses outside of your designated path, um, you might be able to register in at a later time if there is room in one. Um, those spots are always gonna be designated first for the participants in that particular track. And then if there is room, uh, we may make it available to um, others to take. Um, so that um, is just a brief overview of that. Please remember that um, as a part of this program, you will be taking six non-credit college level courses uh, for your training path. This is a workforce uh, certification program. So it is more focused on the workforce piece of it, um, which is why they are non-credit classes. However, just because they are non-credit, um, it's very important to realize that these are still college level courses. Courses are offered through live virtual lectures, um, six hours per week. The lectures will be recorded for participants who cannot attend live. Uh, this is a nationwide program, as well as we have several participants who are stationed overseas on active duty. So we understand there are time zone differences uh, with the courses being offered in the central time zone. We understand that some of our participants may work shift work um, that does not allow them to always attend the live uh, lecture. That is fine. They are going to be recorded for you're viewing at a later time um, if you cannot attend those virtual lectures live. And then just as a, a reminder, there will be no in-person offerings uh, because this is a nationwide program. Um, everything is going to be virtual. Um, each session you will be taking will be eight weeks um, in length. 
Typically participants will take one to two courses per session. Um, some may want to take three. However, typically only two courses in your track will be offered at a time. So if you take a third track, it's usually gonna be possibly one of those courses outside of your designated track if there is room available. That means that um, participants will complete this program um, between 30 and 60 weeks, depending on how many courses you take a session. If you're just taking one course at a time, that means it's going to take you six sessions um, uh, or, or about 60 weeks because it's an eight week session plus a, a two week break in there. Um, and then if you take two courses, it's going to take 30 weeks. Um, some participants will change from one, one course, one session to two courses, one session. There is some flexibility in that. They may have more time availability in one session as opposed to another. So um, that is an estimate of how long it could take you to finish um, this, this uh, program. Um, each course may lead to an industry recognized certification. Um, so when you register for your classes, um, Amber will typically send you or will send you your uh, path of study. And on there, it does tell you which certifications are associated with which classes. Um, typically, um, you're going to be taking six courses. I think for most of the um, tracks, there's going to be at least five certifications that you can get within those six courses. Um, with some of them, all six courses may lead to a, a certification. It is very important, again, to mention that uh, the grant funding for this program will cover the testing fees up to three certifications. You do not have to take the certifications um, to get the cert certificate um, for this program. So some uh, participants may already have some of the certifications. Some will choose not to take some of the certifications. Some will choose to maybe pay for uh, those certifications that may be of a lesser cost um, out of their own pocket to keep the three covered certifications uh, for those more expensive certifications. So um, that is, again, important to realize that um, this grant will pay for up to three certifications, but there could be the potential to earn more than the three. Um, you would just have to pay for anything above the three certifications um, out of your own pocket. Um, even though these are non-credit classes, there could be an opportunity uh, for there to be a crosswalk uh, for these non-credit courses into credit courses at the four um, institutions in, uh, in this consortium. So Ivy Tech, Purdue Northwest, University of uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, and University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Um, so there could be a possibility of these crosswalking into four credit classes. Um, the program is currently looking at that and what those would look like. Um, if you want to transfer to any other institution outside of the consortium when you are done with this to see if you could get four credit um, crosswalk, that would be up to those receiving institutions. Um, um, and this is just a quick reminder of the training session uh, schedule. So um, we are about to start our August, uh, our regular session one. Uh, we just got finished with our pilot session, which was June um, through last week. Um, so uh, originally this uh, program was supposed to end in the summer of next year of 2022, um, but it has been extended to now end in 2023. Um, so that's just, a, again, a brief reminder of the training schedule. Um, again, they are eight weeks with a, a two week break um, in between. Um, and again, you may take one to two classes in each of those sessions until you complete all six of your courses. And then um, this is on the web on our uh, our website uh, www.cwct.us um, under the the training uh, session schedule. Um, and then just another quick reminder um, of the the covered costs and support. And Matthew Cloud is going to talk a little bit more about the support um, that we can provide um, in this program with the support analysts. But um, I just wanted to briefly cover again um, 
the, what the covered costs of this program are um, based on uh, the grant that was received. Um, so first of all, um, all of the assessments that you took um, to be admitted to the program, uh, the English, the math, and the IT assessments, those were all a covered uh, cost uh, with this grant, um, as well as if you used any of the tutoring available, the study paths or training modules, that was all covered. And as I mentioned before, this will cover the test fees um, of up to three certifications. Now, um, any additional, when you make your certification tests, any additional cost that the proctoring site may charge itself, um, if there's charges for taking it virtually, those kinds of things, um, those may be an additional cost. Uh, we are covering, uh, this program covers, uh, gives you the voucher for the actual testing fee, again, for up to three certifications. Um, also covered are the live virtual uh, in instruction, the courses, which are faculty led. Um, and again, those will be recorded for later viewing. This also covers um, support for you all. Um, the program managers are, are available to you for assistance um, if you have questions about the program in general. But if you have questions specifically about the classes, the material in the classes, then your cybersecurity support and, and analysts are really, and your instructors are going to be uh, kind of your go-to for that. Um, so the cybersecurity support analysts, again, uh, Matthew, um, is, I believe is gonna talk about when we talk about um, the different support. They are there to provide um, possible tutoring, uh, technical support, uh, the virtual machine development and maintenance um, that you will encounter as a part of this class. Um, most of the material is going to be online material, uh, different programs you're gonna use, uh, open educational resources, things like that, all of that is going to be covered. Um, costs within this program will be covered by the grant. Um, and, and there may not even be books or materials per se um, for certain courses. Um, if there are any uh, books that are available in like a hard copy that you would choose to buy, and I'm not sure that there even are for most of these classes, um, those you would be responsible for purchasing. But any of the online books, materials, programs um, that you're gonna need are, are covered um, by this grant. Um, so that that is, um, yeah, so that, those are the covered uh, costs and support. Um, Matthew, are you available to kind of talk about some of the uh, support um, and, and those kinds of things uh, for this program? Sure, thanks, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Matthew Cloud. I am a professor now at Holy Cross College at Notre Dame, but I'm also involved with this grant um, as a director of the grants, helping with the administrative side. Uh, we have support staff uh, to help you here uh, with Edwina Aponte. Edwina, are you here? And we got a large participant list. I don't know if Edwina was able to join us this evening or not, but Edwina has um, a staff of three uh, part-time support analysts helping her uh, to support you and your classes. So in each of your syllabi, you'll see a link. There's a lot of different information that's given in the syllabus on support. One of those is cwct-support at ivytech.edu. That's just for each of you as participants in this program, as opposed to the general support that the rest of the students at Ivy Tech get. Um, some of the questions we've had as we go through this is that, are we doing cert certification boot camps? This is not intended to be a boot camp. We're not trying to, to push you through and learn this in a week. And if you've got industry knowledge, you know what? Some of it may be a little slow for you on that, but most people need more time to go through it. And we found that uh, through a, a variety of different research techniques that have, we've done over the past uh, seven years at Ivy Tech in particular. And so we have these eight week courses for you to learn the knowledge. And then there's another eight, eight weeks of material available to you for certifications for those that you choose to take. The cost for that are constantly changing and we don't have a way to say it's gonna be X dollar until we look at it at the day we look to purchase it. But we do have academic pricing. So as uh, you know, this afternoon, actually at lunch, I was spending uh, my lunch time with, with Red Hat about how do we make sure we can reduce those costs so we can support more students. The more we can reduce the cost, the more people we can support through this program. 
So like the cost for Red Hat system administrator right now is $400 retail. If you go through and use the materials that we have and you take at least 25% of the materials, you, you go through it that they, they can see, then they're gonna give you an individual 50% uh, discount, but we're gonna pay for it. So we're still trying to work out the details of how do we pay for that for those that wanna choose that certification. But in order for us to pay for it, we're gonna ask you to pass the course, this eight week course. You'll be given a grade of A, B, C, D, F, but, but ultimately it's pass fail. If you're making an A or a B, that's probably a good course for you to look at at taking a certification. If you're making a C or D, still passing, um, you might want to look at a different course to take the certification, right? So as you take that course and you go through it, you won't have to make a decision until after you take the course and you pass it, if that's one of those that you want to use within this pro program for us to pay for. Um, some of them, like Python Essentials, Python Essentials actually has two different certifications. One's 50 bucks. The other one's around $150. You may want to do just one of those. You might want to pay for one out of your pocket. It's, it's hard to say. Um, so if you look at, um, if you'll go to the next slide, slide uh, Chrissy. Yeah, um, before you uh, sure. continue, I, um, I got a, a message um, that I did forget to mention. Um, obviously, you are all going to want internet access, um, and it is going to be very difficult to do these courses off of your phones um, based on some stuff from the pilot session. So that is something I forgot to mention that one of the instructors um, brought to me. So make sure you have, um, you know, internet access and try not to work off your phone. You, you but yes, really need I at least a tablet, at least a tablet to do this stuff. Ideally, we recommend you having some sort of desktop or laptop, but you need at least a tablet to make this work properly. If you're trying to watch it off of just a phone, you can watch what's going on, but you can't interact. And the classes are intended that you're spending at least um, two thirds of your time working on labs with your fellow students in the class and the instructor so that you understand how to go through it. And we're doing that as instructors as well, keep continuing to push the edge. So a lot of this technology, the first few classes, much of it is, is pretty standard, but as you go deeper into it, a lot of material is new, completely new for any college. So um, there are going to be some, some pain points as we go through it. I've been working for four years with AWS and Oracle on creating AI and machine learning courses. And I've got it down there where you don't have to know uh, a lot about math. If you can pay for your bill at a, at, a, at a Mediterranean restaurant, that's all the Greek you need to know. I'm, I'm saying that probably the group in here, my, the staff and faculty work with me have heard me say that I don't know how many times now. But really, you don't have to know that much about math to get involved with AI and machine learning at this point. If you want to go deeper into it, like any field, you're going to have to get deeper in those areas. But also to help start you off, on that scheduling, at the bottom of the training schedule, um, there are some new courses that we've added in there that you can take whenever you self-enroll. Introduction to Packet Tracer is about a little bit about networking in that simulator, but it can connect to virtual machines. If you don't know much about what I'm saying when I say a simulator or a virtual machine, you take your A plus IT essentials course, you'll learn more about that in there. If you want to learn more about just cybersecurity and cybersecurity essentials, we've got those two courses. One's about 10 hours, another one's about 20. Uh, getting connected, some basic networking. Um, there's an IoT introduction, which will help you on the IoT AI path. There's some cloud system admin and forensics that, that starts with a little bit of Linux. If you're not familiar with what a command line interface is, you've always used a graphic interface like Windows. Um, that will give you a clue as to what's happening on that side because it all comes down to back to a command line interface at some point. Um, and we have some other tools in there like AWS Cloud Foundations that we can sign you up for. Those take a little bit more effort. Just have to let us know and we can add you in. Um, you need access to Windows 10 and another email saying that there's not a tech requirement. Is it possible to do these courses on an Apple product? Yes. Uh, I don't know of any of these courses, what we're teaching that requires you to use Windows 10 in particular. There's some software we recommend, like in the Python course, the Raptor and Flowgrithm, which do not install on Apple, but on Windows. You can install Windows 10 on an emulator. Uh, I'm sorry, not sorry, an emulator, but a, a VM type of uh, system on Windows, uh, um, on an Apple OS, uh, Apple Mac computer. Um, and Windows 10 is provided through our, our agreement with Microsoft. Uh, as Ivy Tech is a college, so that's something available to you. But there's really nothing that you have to have that working to, to make it to work properly. So um, 
Are there other questions out there about this stuff on certifications or support that you might need? Please feel and free I, to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, I mentioned in the chat that um, the self prep, um, the self prep information can be found on our website at uh, pnw.edu forward slash cybersecurity forward slash CWCT forward slash training schedule. When Amber sends out the, the YouTube link, this uh, presentation will also be sent to you guys. So if you're having trouble reading some of the font, um, the links, that kind of thing, this will be sent to you guys as well. We're even trying to turn this technology where it could be used by the blind, um, which is you know pushing it to the limit on some of these things. Um, yes, you can get Windows 10 and other Windows software uh, for free licensing for personal use, not for business use. Uh, yes, it is the professional version. We actually have many other versions of Windows as well. That's part of our licensing agreement. So, um, but you can learn about that in the A plus course. That's one area where that's a really good fit. Um, any other questions? Professor Cloud, I did have a, a quick question. Um, Cheryl Riley here. I think I might have misunderstood what you were saying earlier about the red hat. Were you saying that if we don't pass that, that we would have to pay back that certification? No, fee? I never said anything about paying back anything. So we will not pay for your certification, though, unless you pass the course. Right. So if you want to pay for it on your own, you're welcome to. But if you fail the course, we're not going to pay for the certification. I hope that okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes much more sense than what I was running through my mind. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're struggling with it, you find yourself failing in it. We've got a tremendous support team to help you out. So we don't want you to fail. Um, there, there really shouldn't be much of a reason to fail other than maybe something came up in your life and you just can't keep up with it. That does happen. We actually had most of the students who went through the 95 uh, complete the courses fairly well. So, um, and it's a, it's a hard time in everybody's life right now, still with all this stuff with COVID and we understand that. So um, it is through a non-credit uh, format so that we have more flexibility. Plus the fact that we're working with four, three universities and a college, it make, makes it a little bit more open to what we can do for you as students in the program and then transfer it in. So all of these courses that we're teaching in here have a correlated course within Ivy Tech. If you pass the certification, it's an easy transfer in. If you don't pass the certification or decide not to take that certification, there's a longer path that we can take, but you can still get credit. And we're working on that with each of the universities. And part of my role is, is working with that with um, other universities throughout the nation, as well as I'm kind of like in two meetings right now, I'm actually in a Midwest CIOs meeting for cybersecurity about how do we get people into employment, right? And they're like looking for more people. We're like, okay, well, we've got 150 people we're bringing in in August. We have 95 that just started in June. So it's we're, we're all working in concert to help you get those basic skills that you need, as well as how do we help make those employer connections? So ideally, this can become an apprenticeship, internship type program. Great. Any other questions? Matt, it looks like there's a question in the chat uh, about uh, when the extra classes uh, remain available uh, if they end their program in March. So uh, the program goes through September of 23. So as long as there's open spots and you're in the program, we're happy to accommodate adding people into, into classes that have open spots. We're trying to make sure we have the, the, the spots filled for the cohorts first. But about this time, about two weeks beforehand, um, your campus program managers can help you with seeing if there's an open spot in the class. Does that I think help? They might be referring to, I think they might be referring to the uh, slide, to those extra classes. Oh, so these extra classes that are on the slide right now, anybody, you can just click on it. I uh, go to the cwct.us uh, and then go to the training schedule. You'll see at the, at the right-hand side uh, of the different menu options, the top right-hand side. And this, after you see the schedules for like when we start for August 16th and all that, at the bottom of the page are these um, courses there. You just open up the plus, click on it, and send in your email, and it'll sign you up. In a, so most of these are through Cisco Netacad. There's a couple other processes we have to do. If you want to do like uh, Cloud Foundations or um, some of the other stuff through AWS, you just need to let your campus program manager know, and I will add you, I have to add you in manually into those classes. 
Um, and then we're working on the forensics track right now. So we have a private cloud system. We have some public cloud as well as some more corporate like AWS uh, and Red Hat, depending upon which course you might do in there, um, that have different setups available for you to use. So um, ideally, normally it works pretty smooth, but like with anything, there can be glitches, right? Thank you for putting that link in there, Michael. Thank you. Yes, remote internships are, are something we're working on, as you might imagine, trying to get into cybersecurity where you have the keys to the kingdom is a little bit harder than saying, I'm going to do an internship in welding, but we're getting there. No, you're not booted from the school per se. No. Okay, so I think our next one there. Um, no, uh, Mike, actually, we're, we're only paying for it for one try, basically. I might be able to squeeze out another one if there's a special circumstance, maybe you're close. Sometimes I can go to the vendor and say, hey, they missed it by a few points. Um, can you get them another try? So it, there might be some case by case deals, but as a whole, no. So, uh, but if you have other questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, and I think we're moving on to introducing the uh, faculty that are working with you, yes? Yes, thank you, Matthew. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's go ahead and let's start with um, Dima. Are you here, our A plus instructor on Saturdays? So, for those of you who have A plus on Saturdays, um, Dima is your instructor, and I thought I saw her pop in. I'm right here. Awesome. Do you want to? Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Dima. I'm going to be your. Uh... A plus or one of your A plus instructors. I've been with Ivy Tech um, for about maybe four or five years, um, but I've been teaching technology classes for about 18 years now. Um, I am very excited to meet all of you and have you in my class. And um, I hope that you're gonna find this program or programs very useful and um, I look forward to the beginning of the, the term. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dima. Um, I'm not certain if Pam or Connie are here. They're also teaching the A plus courses this fall. So I'm here. Constance. Connie, would you like to yeah, would you like yeah. to say introduce um, yourself? Sure. So like Dima, I've been with Ivy Tech for um, almost five years. Uh, I am going to be teaching the A plus courses. Uh, my background is in banking and telecom, mostly with IT support and web development, a little bit of networking too. So um, currently working on my PhD in information technology. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wonderful, thank you so much. And then, yep, for those of you who have Monday and Wednesday evenings, A plus and you'll have Pam as an instructor, but I don't think Pam was able to join us today. Um, moving on to Linux, um, Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Norval, are you here? Yes, I am. Uh, hello. Perfect. I'm Norval Hodges. Uh, I've been at uh, Ivy Tech for about five years. Um, background, I've been in IT for almost over 30 years. Um, in primarily in research and development for uh, at and and Lucid Technology. Um, I've been teaching for about 23 years, uh, different courses in networking and IT support and in programming. So I've, I've got a variety of backgrounds in a lot of different areas and support to help you in a lot of different areas as well. Uh, I'm instructing the um, Linux Red Hat uh, Systems Administration course. And uh, primarily we are going to um, be within the Red Hat Academy doing most of their assignments directly through their academy. Wonderful, thank you so much, Norva. Looking forward to having you back on for another sure. session. All right, glad to be here. And then for those of you who have Linux on Saturdays, Bill, I think I saw Bill pop in. Just the instructor yeah, I'm for here. that. Yeah, Bill, awesome. You want to introduce yourself? 
Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Warden. I've been uh, with Ivy Tech since 2002 as a full time instructor and was uh, active in actually trying to get Red Hat started along with Matthew Cloud across the state. And we really did integrate it into our Ivy Tech Linux courses to the point where we, well, we can't call it Red Hat, but I basically used all their objectives and built our courses from their framework. So never really had the opportunity to use the tools that Red Hat provides us. And that for me is the most exciting difference for this. Got my Linux Plus, I've been teaching using Linux, using the other tools along the way. I've actually first loaded Linux in 1995 without even really understanding what the heck it was and then getting back into it around the year 2000 or so. So this will be a fun ride and I really look forward to uh, spending my weekends a little differently with some Linux on, uh, on the side, if you will. So look forward to everybody and uh, in the class and having a common experience, enjoying something that other people find frustrating, which I find satisfying because let's face it, in IT, that's job security. <laughs> nice, wonderful. Thanks so much, Bill. No problem. And then for um, those of you in the AI track, you'll be taking Python as one of your courses. And Chris, um, I don't know if Chris is with us today, but Chris is going to be your instructor. Yeah, I'm then. here. Awesome, Chris, if you want to introduce yourself. Okay, greetings. Uh, my name is Chris Roberts. I'm the department chair for the School of Information Technology at Ivy Tech Fort Wayne. I've been at Ivy Tech since 2008. Uh, seems like just yesterday and simultaneously seems like forever. I'm sure Bill know, knows how that feels. Uh, I am prior military. I was in the Navy. Um, I've got my bachelor's and master's in computer systems engineering from Penn State. Um, I've got 30 years experience in industry uh, before coming to Ivy Tech and still not quite sure how I ended up at Ivy Tech, but uh, uh, that's a interesting bouncing around to a lot of different industries. And I look forward to educating you on Python, secure programming, and programming concepts in general. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, and then we have some other instructors who are joining us. So other instructors that you'll be having in future sessions. Um, and some of you are taking cyber ops because you already had A+. Um, so one of our instructors, very popular instructor, to, who's teaching on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, Chuck. Yes, how is everybody doing? Um, my name is Chuck DeCastro, um, and I've been teaching at Purdue for around four years. I did not start my career at Purdue as a uh, faculty. I started as a security engineer, and then a couple months later, uh, the faculty position or the opportunity came, and I, I took it, and I will not trade that for anything. Um, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I'm a retired police officer for over 22 years. Uh, during my career, I did everything from patrol to SWAT, uh, but also uh, I was given the opportunity to be the IT officer where I did everything, networking, uh, system updates. That included also later on forensics and the security part of it. Um, and um, for this program, I teach the forensics, as of now, the forensics course and the cyber ops. So a little background on myself. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Chuck. And then we have another cyber ops instructor um, joining us tonight. Is it or Joe? Did I see you pop in? I'm here. Wonderful. Joe, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is uh, Joe Bodden. Hi, everybody. I work at Ivy Tech. I'm the uh, lead faculty for the Cyber Academy at the Muscatatuck Urban Training Center. Uh, my background is also Navy. I've spent a combination of 30 years in the Navy and the government. Um, cybersecurity has been my passion for several years now. I have a graduate degree in cybersecurity, uh, CISSP, CHFI, CEH Master. Um, I love cybersecurity. I think this is going to be a fantastic program. I can't wait to get into it. Wonderful. Uh, Joe's teaching our Saturday cyber ops class. So enjoy your weekends with Joe. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you so much. 
And then um, Security Plus is another course that you guys will be taking eventually. And one of our instructors for that, Rob, is joining us tonight. He, um, I thought I saw him pop in. I am here. There he is. I'm Rob Searsma. I've been uh, teaching with Ivy Tech for many years now, but my day-to-day -day work, I'm the uh, head of infrastructure and information security at Methodist Hospitals in Northwest Indiana. So I am in the weeds every day as a manager and hands-on with our cybersecurity, uh, dealing with the constant threats to the organization. So I hope to uh, be able to bring some of the current industry experience to you. And in addition to that, I'm a uh, CompTIA subject matter expert, which means that I've helped uh, write some of their exams. I've been an exam developer for uh, A plus, Server plus, and IT fundamentals. And unfortunately, my non-disclosure prevents me from sharing anything on those courses. But I'm hoping my experience in that area uh, will shed some light on the test taking process uh, and how the exams work. And uh, really help you out uh, during my class for the Security Plus exam. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rob. And then our other Security Plus instructor already on deck, uh, Jeff Edwards. Jeff, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Jeffrey Edwards. I, like uh, several of my colleagues, uh, started in the military. So I started in the Navy. Uh, I have 24 years technology experience. So I've been in all several facets. I'm not going to say all. I've been in project management, I've been in service delivery, I've been in service management, and for the last six years, I've been in cybersecurity. So currently, my full-time role, I'm the global security vendor or vendor manager for Walgreens. So I manage our cybersecurity oversight for our third-party vendors. Uh, I teach cybersecurity. This is going to be my first cohort here, but I also teach in another uh, college in Chicago. So excited to be here and look forward to working with you guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Appreciate that. Um, is there any other instructors that I missed? I'm pretty sure I got everybody covered, but I don't uh, yes. want... Yes, uh, Amber, there's uh, 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 Professor Valerie is here. Valerie. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm actually teaching your A-plus class on Monday, Wednesday nights this fall, and I'm very excited to be joining you. I've taught with uh, full-time with ID Tech for 11 years and another two or three years as an adjunct here and at other colleges. Uh, my master's is in information systems and security. So cybersecurity is really my passion. Um, so I'll try to incorporate a little bit of that into your studies and IT essentials, but you got to have the basics uh, before you start going. And so IT essentials is, is a lot of fun because it's hands-on. Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of, you know, writing reports or anything like that. You're going to get to uh, get your hands dirty, uh, the best way to learn. So I'm really excited to uh, start teaching with you and work with you. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Valerie. I can't believe I, I missed you. Yeah, I was even talking to you at the beginning. So it's okay. um, <laughs> um, I know that one of the more common questions and all the faculty cannot chime in on this one is that the students kind of want to know what the structure of the class is going to be like. Is there going to be a lot of quizzes or a lot of assigned reading or lab work? Like what can would anybody who's been teaching already kind of share how they plan to structure their class? Just to I don't mind talking okay. yeah, go ahead. about um, the way I plan to structure it. Um, there is a lot of reading that you'll do outside of class, um, but inside class, we'll um, take what you've read and put it to work. So you're not going to be doing a, a lot of anything written outside of class. There'll probably be a few labs and some quizzes. and but a lot of reading, so. Thank you. You're Any welcome. other instructors want to jump in? Linux, Professor, Python. Professor Ben is here. Oh, wonderful. OK, my, I structured my class in a way that will provide almost uh, the instructional class of each week that I hold, as well as support 
uh, for you to self-study as well. So a lot of the information uh, aligned to the information that's in Red Hat according to the objectives uh, from each chapter. So I tried to build each chapter along with the objective of Red, of objectives of Red Hat and support it with the actual pages in Red Hat that go over the objectives. As well as I tried to add additional links to the objective to other information that's out there on the web, as well as videos that go over the same content objectives, as well as uh, the actual labs uh, that are associated with the objectives in the chapters are also associated with that, as well as a quiz or test. So there's going to be a quiz and test in every chapter that outline the instructions that needed to know for the overall objective of the chapters, as well as for every two weeks, you'll get kind of a, uh, a quarterly exam covering the material of several chapters and focusing in on the questions that will be associated with the overall certification for Red Hat. Perfect. Um, two questions that popped up in chat. Instructors, any projects with your courses and um, any discussion boards? Yeah, this is Chris. Uh, relative to the Python, yes, there are discussion boards. I actually use a discussion board to teach you guys the concept of code walkthroughs and peer reviews. Uh, in doing that, you will have programming assignments that you will write programs for the Python course. You will be posting your programs to a discussion board for review and critique by your fellow students. At the same time, you will be having the opportunity to review the code written by your fellow students and providing them a critique. Uh, that does a couple of things that allows you to become familiar with code walkthroughs and peer reviews, which are standard in industry. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to look at how other people have solved the same or similar problems. They may have taken a slightly different approach and maybe you can help them out by pointing out mistakes that you may have encountered and they can also help you out by providing a critique and review on your code. Thank you for that, Chris. And then any instructors, I'm assuming we didn't get any chime in, so no projects that were gonna be assigned for the courses. Hi, this is Joe. Hey, Joe. The, uh, the, the cyber ops course that we're using from Netacad has a lot of really good labs in it. I wouldn't call them projects, but they're really good labs. They, they walk you through doing things like threat hunting, and you know, looking at the you know, reverse engineering, some really, really good labs. So uh, not, there's not any, really a project, but there's gonna be you know, some pretty involved labs for the course. And uh, Amber, I'm gonna piggy bank off of that. That is very true. Um, going through the cyber ops material, uh, they got very good labs that I guess you can call it a project uh, because it's very, it's very in depth. A lot of information can be gained from it. So. But there's not necessarily a project, but very good information. So lots of labs, lots of lab work. Yeah, and that's true with uh, IT essentials too. You're going to have lots of labs that you're going to do. Um, of course, the quizzes and exams, but there's really no discussion boards to speak of in the IT essentials course to answer that question. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, um, any other questions? I don't see anything else popping up in chat. Um, it looks like Chrissy had answered about test prep questions. So Amber, um, I, I don't know if this got answered here. I saw it in there about a discussion board. There's not necessarily discussion boards in there, but we do have an org. I don't know if y'all talked about that at all. We did create an org here recently uh, so that it. students can more easily connect with each other. You'll see more about that soon. Yep, as soon as um, I get everybody in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so that you can have discussion boards to talk about things more broadly. We'll be putting employment information, and other things in there as well. Thank you for that, Matthew. All right. Um, Chrissy, do you want to go ahead and, and 
show them all things Ivy Learn in my yep. Ivy account. Can do. Um, so I realized earlier that I did forget to introduce myself. Um, however, every single one of you participants got an email from me at some point during your application process. So hopefully uh, you know who I am, but I am Chrissy Duncan. I am the program manager um, through the uh, Ivy, Ivy Tech Community College. Um, because all of the uh, coursework is going through Ivy Tech, um, I had a somewhat additional role of of the application process to, to get you guys along in your steps um, that the other program managers uh, may not have had. But what I am going to do, um, let me share my screen again. I lost my, oh, it's over here. Um, okay, I am going to share my screen. And then um, I'm actually gonna also turn off my video because you guys don't need to see me. Um, all right, can you guys see um, my, my internet browser? Yes. Um, okay, wonderful. I wanted to make sure I was sharing the right thing. Um, so I am today going to talk about two big pieces of technology you'll be using as a participant in this program. Uh, we get a lot of questions on how do I actually connect with my classes. So that is what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, you've actually already used both of these pieces, uh, both My Ivy and Ivy Learn, when you went through the application process when you were taking your assessments. But I am going to discuss tonight more closely um, how they relate to your participation in your courses. And while this uh, program is made up of the consortium of the four uh, universities, the Ivy Tech system is what is being used um, to participate uh, in, in and complete the program. So tonight we will be looking at My Ivy, which is your student portal, and then Ivy Learn, which is the online course uh, management system, uh, the learning management system or LMS. Um, Ivy Learn is how you actually access your courses for your virtual lectures, for your coursework, for your syllabus. There may be some additional outside uh, programs you're gonna use. Um, I believe NetAcad was mentioned, um, but you will be given information on those things uh, in your courses. So I'm going to just discuss the two. Um, how do you even get into your classes in the first place? So there are several different ways to get to your My Ivy and your Ivy Learn. Um, the first is going to be through the main Ivy Tech website, which is what I have up here now. Um, it's just www.ivytech.edu. You will see up here on in the upper right hand side, here is your link for My Ivy. And here is your link um, for Ivy Learn. Um, you can also go to My Ivy um, directly. Um, if you do my uh, my Ivy ivytech.edu, um, notice there is no www. Um, I would just recommend uh, bookmarking this uh, this website. And again, uh, this link was also um, in all of your assessment material. That's how you got to your assessments in the in the first place. So I do recommend you bookmark this page for easy access, um, because then you can access Ivy Learn um, once you get into My Ivy. Um, you do need to, when you click on login, um, it may take me directly into My, yeah. Um, it's going. Um, but when you log in, you need to make sure you are logging in using your Ivy Tech email address that was provided to you during the application process um, and your assessment process. Um, and then using the password that you developed when you made your account. Um, Ivy Tech does not keep record of your passwords. So if you've forgotten your password, uh, you can just click on the reset or forgot password link um, that was on the login page. So if you completed your assessments prior to the end of May, um, My Ivy may look a little different now than it did when you completed your assessments. Uh, My Ivy was revamped um, at the end of May. Um, and then also your My Ivy portal is going to look slightly different than mine as far as the links that are on it, um, because mine is a staff view, um, obviously, while you will have a student view. But the concepts and the links I'm going to discuss will be the same. So here is your My Ivy. Again, this is your student portal. Um, so there are two big pieces you will want to become familiar with in My Ivy for this program. Um, 
a lot of the other links may not be applicable to this program um, since it is a non-credit workforce training based program. Um, for example, you may see a link that says my schedule. You are not going to see your schedule um, when you click on this because these are non-credit courses. Um, the my schedule link will only show four credit classes. So that's just one example. Um, but the two big pieces that I want to show you on how to access are your Ivy Learn, which is how you are going to access your classes, and your student email. These are gonna be two big pieces that are going to be important um, to use in this program. Um, as a participant and as a student, both of those should be listed in your quick links section, which is this middle section right here. Um, as you can see, Ivy Learn is, is in mine, but the student email is not because staff email is, is run through um, um, Outlook. Um, but both Ivy Learn and student email should both be listed in your quick links. Um, and it is called student email is how it's coded. If they are not listed in your quick links, um, you, can, um, you can't add them to your quick links, but you can add them to your favorites. Um, but you can search for them in this quick links section. If you click see all, that will then take you to all the different tools and resources. Again, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff that you are not going to because I am a staff member, but you can search for both Ivy Learn and student email. So here is what the student email link will look like. Again, this should be in your quick links. You can add any of these tools to your favorites by simply clicking, there's a little heart icon on the right hand side here. If you click on that, that will add it to your favorites, um, which you can access then um, here on now the, the my favorite section will only show um, so many favorites, but you can get to your my favorites here. Um, and then you can expand that by see all or up here at the top right, there is a my favorites. So um, you can add those to your favorites if they are not listed in your quick links. Your student email should be the email that you are using to communicate for this program. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, part of it is uh, privacy um, for your educational records um, uh, so that we can make sure that it is you. So please, um, if you have not done so already, some of those who were admitted really early on, uh, we may have been using your uh, personal email, but at this point, please try to remember to use your Ivy Tech email for all things associated um, with this program. Um, so this is how you should send emails to us, and then this is how we will usually send emails to you um, by this point. So make sure you're checking that student email regularly. A uh, few things to point out about your student email. The Ivy Tech student email is run through Gmail. So sometimes what happens is if you have a personal Gmail account uh, where you have your password saved on your computer, when you click on your student email link, it may take you to your personal email account instead of your student email. Um, so if this happens, you're either going to need to log out of your personal Gmail account and then log into your Ivy Tech email, or what I personally recommend is that you add um, an account in your Gmail uh, to easily access both your personal and your uh, student emails. You can easily Google how to add an account in Gmail if you don't know how to do so already. Um, adding an account will then also allow you to easily go back and forth between the two accounts, either in your web browser or if you have the Gmail app. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Some people say, I'm not getting any emails. Well, it's because it's taking them to their personal email because they have their uh, password saved on their computer. Um, so that is everything to know about your student email. Again, please um, be using that. Now, the big piece I know you've all been waiting for is how exactly do you complete your virtual classes? How do you access them? How do you watch the lectures? How do you watch the lectures that are recorded? Um, so right now, um, these are all going to be through Ivy Learn. So I'm going to show you how to access that. Um, if you are already in your My Ivy, um, again, in your quick links um, should be the Ivy Learn link. 
um, or it could be in your favorites, or again, you can go to the main ibtech.edu and it was in the upper right, or a third way to get to it is um, just by going directly to um, the, the website, which is just ivylearn.ivytech.edu um, is, is a third way to get there. So there are several different ways to get to, to Ivy Learn. Um, so if I click on Ivy Learn, um, it did open in a new tab, um, which is, I always recommend. So here is Ivy Learn. Um, now, one piece is I've talked about your Ivy Tech email. However, you will notice here in Ivy Learn, there is also a link here on the left that is called Inbox. Um, this is different than your Ivy Tech email. Um, it's not the same thing as your student email, but it is another way to directly communicate with your instructors. Um, any messages that are sent to and from this inbox will also show up in your Ivy Tech email. Um, the thing with this inbox essentially is it is direct communication with uh, with your course. So your instructors, other students in the class, um, you can then contact others that may be part of, uh, we mentioned an, an org where, where we have formed. Um, so if I click here on inbox, um, you will see here, like if I start, if I compose a message, you can select a course. Um, and I don't have any courses in here right now, um, but like one of the courses I took in the spring, if I were to click on that, you can then directly pull up and your teacher is in there or um, other students in the class, you can message directly. You cannot do that in your Ivy Tech email. Um, so, so the main difference is your, this inbox is, is direct, it's connected with your courses inside of, of Ivy Learn, whereas your email is just gonna be general email. So for example, if I want to send a message to you as, your, as a program manager, that has to go through your Ivy Tech email because it's, it's not associated with a course. Um, so I just, I wanna make sure I've got everything covered here. Okay, so let me go back to my dashboard. Um, so that's the difference between the, the Ivy Tech email and your inbox. Your courses will either, well, you can get to them a, a couple different ways. When you first go into Ivy Learn, you're gonna come up on your dashboard. Your courses will be listed on your dashboard or you can access them here on the left uh, where it says courses. Um, now, an important thing to note is that courses will not appear in Ivy Learn until the Saturday before the courses are scheduled to begin. So if you try to go in there right now, you won't see your courses listed, even though you're registered for them. Um, and even when they become active on that Saturday before they start, um, the instructor may not have everything in place and finalized yet um, until the, the first day of, of of the course itself. So um, if you go in there and you don't see a syllabus or you don't see an announcement, um, it could just be because it, the course hasn't officially started yet and they just haven't gotten it up yet. So please be patient until that first day of class. Um, I am going to use one of my past courses, an example to show you what the course will actually look like once you go in. Now mine is on the four credit side, but it will, it will be exactly the same um, or, or very similar to what you will see once your courses become live. Um, so I do have to go in and find the one I need. Give me one second. Uh, right here. So this is a past course, which is why it was not on my dashboard. Um, but this is a, a Linux class that I took on, on the four credit side um, with, with Rami, actually. Um, so this is what it will look like once you go in um, either. Again, you can go in through your courses menu here on the left or through that dashboard. Um, and then you will see here on the left, there's a bunch of different links. Um, you have, it will always open to your home tab, which will have announcements um, as well as your course syllabus um, and the different modules um, that you may have to do. Again, this, this may look slightly different than what, um, 
than as far as the material, um, since this was a, a four credit class. Um, but you can also get to the announcements, the syllabus, the modules by clicking in the appropriate links here on the left. Um, you will want to uh, carefully read your syllabus for the course when it becomes available. Again, you can either read that uh, in the syllabus tab or by clicking on course syllabus. Um, and um, the modules is where um, you will have access to different modules and coursework. So if I go in here to modules, um, again, yours may, may look a little different, but um, it may have it uh, split up by the week. And then that's where um, there may be an overview, PowerPoints, um, the assignments you're supposed to do, the projects, whatever it may be, um, will be listed um, in your modules. Um, and then, of course, you have a grades tab, which is where um, your grades uh, will be kept. Um, so the big piece um, that you need to know for your virtual classes is not only how to access the live uh, lectures via Zoom, but the recorded Zoom lectures in case you cannot make it to the designated day and time. Um, you can access your lectures live and recorded by simply clicking on the Zoom tab here on the left, it says Zoom. So Zoom is what is used um, uh, like we're do using now for your lectures. So if you click on that Zoom link, you have three different tabs. You will have upcoming meetings, previous meetings, and your cloud recordings. Obviously, since this was a class in the past, I have no upcoming meetings, but this is where um, it will list um, your upcoming meetings um, for your course. Um, in the previous meetings, you will see all the previous meetings that were held, um, as well as you can get to the recording um, here by clicking on recording details. Um, that will open up a link that you can then watch the recording. Um, or you can get to the recording by clicking on cloud recordings. And you will see here, if I click on cloud recordings, um, that is then where you can click on a course um, to watch the recording. Um, so again, your upcoming meetings, your previous meetings and your cloud recordings, all of that is once you enter the class, you simply click on the Zoom link. Um, um, on your first day, if there don't appear to be any upcoming meetings listed, please check your announcements tab, um, as the instructor may have put a link in the announcements for that first day, or check your syllabus to see if that link is there. Um, you know, technology happens, that kind of thing. Um, if you're not seeing a Zoom link anywhere, which we hope will not happen, please contact your instructor through that inbox option. Um, and remember that if you do happen to miss it, if something is happening, you can always go back and watch the recorded lecture if you, if you miss um, that first lecture or any of the lectures. Um, one last thing to mention, Ivy Learn is powered by a company called Canvas. Um, there is a Canvas app, that's C-A-N-V-A-S. There's an app that you can download for your phone um, so that you can look at your grades, you can look at a calendar, you can look at your announcements. Um, you probably are not going to be wanting to do actual work through the Canvas app, but it's nice to quickly check um, if there's an announcement, um, your inbox, those kinds of things. Um, and you will need to use your Ivy Tech information when you set up that app. Um, so that is a very brief overview. Um, Amber, did, are you by any chance watching if there's any questions? I saw a bunch of things going through. Is there anything I need to answer? So um, there was one question, for whatever reason, if unable to attend the class, watching the lecture is obviously um, an option. Just wondering if they would be missing anything, any group activities or discussions by uh, just watching the recorded lecture. I don't know if any of the instructors wanted to chime I say, in yeah, that, that would probably be a question best answered by the instructors. In the IT Essentials, um, there's, I mean, we're going to do lecture, but we will be doing a lot of the labs in class, so you'll miss out on um, instructor help if you're not able to attend the course times. Yeah, there's not a, uh, like, a grade for attending class, if that's part of the, the, the questions embedded there, but you'll, you'll miss out on the interaction, right? 
it's, it's mainly a time to make sure you know when you can go through this stuff. And we understand that things happen. So it, it's, it's set up to really support the students to be in the class. If you're not able to be there, then watch the recording. You may not get much benefit out of the part where they're doing the labs, but you might. You just watch the recording while you go through the labs yourself. Um, and, and you might be surprised that the same kind of timing of when you're going through it with other people having similar issues. Matthew, since you mentioned attendance, could you talk a little bit about the non-attendance date? Right. Now, while there's not a grade for attendance, there it, we are still tracking your attendance. And if you don't submit work and you're not attending the class, um, that we will end up dropping you from the class and from the program. That doesn't mean we're trying to force people out. But if you're not responding or you don't show up, then that's what will ultimately happen. So in the first week, we're looking for you to look to either show up and be active in that class or to uh, submit something or let your professor know that you're not there. Otherwise, the professors are going to get back to the campus program managers and say, hey, this person didn't show up and that campus program manager is going to reach out to you. So not only do, does your, your professor or professors will be reaching out to you, so will the campus program managers reach out to you before we say, hey, we're going to drop you. And that's usually going to happen about one week after the class starts. Thank you, Matthew. Because, you know, there's people waiting to get in room, but some of these classes are on a waiting list. And if, if you're not active, we can get somebody else in there. And we can look at, and, and if, you know, you got a problem with life at that point in time, say, hey, I thought I could do it, but I can't. We could look at, at having you join back in in a later session. Yep, absolutely. I, for those of you who are active duty and if you suddenly get orders and you have to stop during the program, just like Chrissy and I know. Right. And if something comes up like that and you can't, can't reach out to us, when you are able to let us know and we'll get you back in. But we may drop you in the meantime because we just don't hear anything. Good. Chrissy, anything else? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. No, I think that's everything that I had um, for, let me stop sharing, um, for my piece. Um, you know, again, this recording is going to be made available to you. So you can always go back um, and watch that piece if you need to. Um, and, and you cannot mess anything up in my Ivy or Ivy Learn. Um, or it's going to be very, very difficult to. So one of the best things I, is just go around it and click around and explore and, and, and get to know those two pieces, the My Ivy and the Ivy Learn. Uh, like I said, there, there's very little um, that you can really mess up in there. So but you can go back and watch it. Um, and hopefully um, that eases some of your guys' questions um, that I know I've had come up as far as how do I actually participate in these classes. Um, and again, if there are are outside like Medicaid and, and those kinds of programs, your instructor um, will, will um, tell you guys how to access those things. And since we got a couple minutes here, I could actually show NetLab real, real quick. It only takes like 30 seconds. Let me, let me pull that sure. up Sure. If you want to pull that up, there was a question about um, what the role of the program managers are. Um, while you're pulling that up, I can answer that. Um, yeah. So the program managers, um, number one, we were recruiters um, to, to help uh, get participants in, but we are there to, to serve as a support. So if you're having issues um, about the program, um, all of you were assigned to a program manager. They're the ones you can go and ask questions to. Um, if you have questions about the program in general, how things work, um, that kind of thing. Again, if you have specific questions about the courses themselves and the course material, your instructor is probably going to be your best person to talk to. But, um, you know, we are there. Hey, life is going on. I can't really continue. Let us know. Um, we're there to reach out um, if things are, um, if you need resources, um, if, if uh, you know, hey, my internet went out. Can I, can I get a hotspot, you know, and, and we will see what we can do kind of thing. Um, so, and then 
on the end piece, what we are looking at is trying to connect you guys. Um, we are, we're not guaranteeing uh, jobs, job placement, that kind of thing, but one of our pieces as a program manager will also be to try to connect you guys with employers. Um, we are trying to make connections with employers to bring those employment opportunities, internships, apprenticeships to you guys. So program managers have kind of a multifaceted um, you know, role um, with you guys. So, and if we can't answer your question, Question, we can direct you to um, the people who can. All Thanks. right, Matthew, go ahead. So, Chrissy, I think it's showing my screen here. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So, I saw the comment in there about it looking like some other things. Yes, this is actually using virtual machines. So, we have the full operating system back here. You can undock it. So, if you don't have a Windows machine, right? So, I'm hitting Control Alt Delete to open it up. I can undock it, have one Windows machine over here. I have a Windows 2012 uh, server still starting up on that one. But these are some major systems up here. So you can play around with the different environments. You don't have to install anything locally. You don't need that either. That's that's a different lab. But um, let me pull that back, back up here. So um, it has these multiple windows because in a classroom environment, even there, if you're in a physical classroom, it's difficult to have uh six computers setting up on your desktop right so we use this netlab interface for the majority of classes we've been using this for a long time at ivy tech but the majority of your classes will be using this netlab system uh, some classes use netacad for um, in informational materials and lab um, directions some use uh, red hat academy some of them we've created uh, on our own so but that that's that's why you don't it doesn't it really matter what you're using on your end device, but using a cell phone is not going to work real well. Technically, it'll work, but it'll be a real struggle to make that work on a cell phone. Perfect. Thank okay. you, Matthew. Awesome. All right. So um, the next thing that we're going to be moving into is talking more specifically about your track. Um, so you each had to pick one of the three tracks, digital forensics, artificial intelligence, or system administration. And we have the PIs who develop those courses here to talk, uh, talk about their tracks and um, give a little bit more specifics about the certifications and maybe some of the job specific jobs that would be geared towards people completing those tracks. Um, so Michael too, do you want to start us off with digital forensics? Sure, yeah. Um... So Chris, may I uh, share my screen? Yep, you should be able to share. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone. So my name is Michael Tu. I'm a professor, cybersecurity professor at the Purdue University, Los West. And my, I'm in the, directing this uh, CWCT training program. Um, so, uh, well, I'm also the PI for this uh, cyber you know, forensics track. So today I will uh, focus a little bit on the uh, forensic part. Um, before that, I was uh, talking about the like a little bit about the like core course and uh, the certification. So uh, by design of this uh, training program, you can read my slides, right? Okay. Okay, great. So by design, so this course are not only just for you to take the certification. So we will prepare you to um, you know, be able to take this uh, certification, but also will cover a lot of other stuff like the fundamentals and the some of the hands-on uh, through the lab activities. So uh, for example, you know, in our A plus course, we not only just teach you to how to pass this A, A plus certification. So we will also uh, teach some of the fundamentals on the network part, right? So that's why people are uh, surprised to see there will be one week or you know, one week half about the uh, networks. Okay, so uh, that's one thing I would like to clarify. Okay, okay, so uh, we have uh, three tracks. We have three tracks. So we have the uh, forensic track, we have the administrators uh, track, and we also have the AI track. And those three tracks share three core course. So those these three courses like A plus, Security plus, and the Cisco Cyber Ops, they are required by all the three tracks. Okay, so then each track will have its own three uh, core uh, track specific course. Like forensics, we do have the Linux system administration, right? 
And also we have the computer forensics and another course is a computer hacking forensic investigator, which is a CHFI, right? Um, is offered by EC Console. So we're trying to uh, train, prepare you to take that EC Console CHFI uh, certification. Okay, so um, for the A-plus course, if you want to know a little bit about the A-plus course, you can always go to the uh, this uh, website. It's, you know, we have the course description, okay? So this, uh, you know, A-plus course, we do, you know, it will cover a lot of uh, topics like uh, the hardware and the software, right? Network cables and, um, uh, you know, operating systems, right? Uh, OS installation, configuration, those are very, very basic, right? So, and, but also we, as I have been talking about, we will cover a little bit about the network basic fundamentals and you are going to, uh, you know, spend one week or maybe two weeks, right? Up to two weeks, okay? Maybe a little bit less than that to talk about the uh, use the tools like uh, uh, Pack Tracer, right? To work on the networks, you know, depends on the instructor, okay? Depends on, depends on the instructor. But the network is uh, uh, mo one of the most important topic in this, uh, you know, fundamental course. Okay, so um, then we have the uh, security pass course, which will cover the fundamental knowledge and skills in cybersecurity, for example, uh, we were talking about the principles, right? Okay, uh, CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and many others. And also we were talking about access control, identity management, uh, threats, vulnerabilities, and application operating, operating system, and um, maybe the, the, the software security, right? So it, this one is focused on the fundamentals, on the uh, concepts, uh, knowledge, and a little bit on skills, okay? So if we want talking about the more, um, you know, like tech, technical, like, you know, how we're going to conduct uh, attacks, right? Or, or we're trying to assess the system, then that uh, has to uh, go through the other course, it's a uh, CH course, Certified Ethical Hacker, okay? But this security part covers the fundamental, cover almost every part, okay? Uh, you need to know about the security. And then we have the, uh, you know, uh, cyber ops course. So this course is mainly to, uh, you know, build the fundamental about the network and also network uh, security, okay? So we will, um, you know, spend probably uh, three to four weeks talking about the network uh, protocols, network servers, right? And uh, maybe a little bit about the network device depends on the instructor. And uh, then we will, of course, um, talking about the, uh, you know, vulnerabilities, right? Security issues, how to manage that and make their, uh, you know, uh, how to make that secure, right? So that's kind of a natural part of this uh, cybersecurity area. So, uh, of course, um, again, the uh, instructor could have, you know, uh, cover a little bit different, you know, they may bring something, uh, you know, they think is very important, but it's very related to this topic, okay? And uh, all this course, like this course has a, um, you know, the, a logic part and also hands-on part. Okay, so those are about the three, uh, you know, a certificate uh, uh, core course. And as you can see, right, all these three course has, uh, you know, direct map to a uh, certifications like A plus course map to A plus, right? Everybody know. So they have like two, uh, two part, okay. And uh, security pass, we do have a complete TIA security pass, okay. And uh, we have uh, the SAP ops, which is Cisco SAP op, and then. Uh, is also a uh, certification called CIS, uh, is a sub op uh, associate, right? Okay, something like that. So um, as we have talking about, you, you need to pass this course, um, you know, get the passing grade, okay, passing grade. And then you can request whether you want to uh, take this uh, certification or not. And then we will release the preparation material because those are, are from the, uh, you know, uh, professional, uh, you know, companies, right? The vendors, so then they, they charge. And then uh, once you uh, pass, you know, be, be, be confident, confident enough, for example, you're taking the quiz, practical quiz, like 90%, right? Multiple times, then probably you will be able to, is ready to uh, take the exam and you will, you can, we will give you the um, watcher. Okay. okay, so uh, for this forensic course, so I don't have much time to talk about the, um, take a look at the, Sorry, you know, I know there's Harry, all right? Send lots of the, um, you know, <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, 
There are three uh, forensic specific course. Uh, one course is like Linux system administration. So uh, it's mainly about the Linux commands, right? And how to manage the Linux system, okay? And of course, uh, what is it? It's not the, the forensic part, right? Okay. So these are the three course. So Linux system administration and the computer forensic and the CHFI, yeah, CHFI. So I'm going back to the course description part. So uh, well, Linux, right? So everybody knows Linux, what they're talking about is the command line, right? And uh, they, of course they all, they have some GUI, um, you know, base, but mainly is, uh, you know, command line, okay? So uh, it will cover a lot of, you know, about the system administration part, okay? And uh, uh, that course is a computer, uh, forensics and uh, computer hacking forensic investigator. So this uh, CHFI course is actually covers a lot of uh, fundamentals on the, uh, for example, investigation, right? Okay, forensic law regulations, procedures, tools, right? They will also cover some like media analysis, OS forensics, okay? And, um, um, okay, um, yeah, I will, okay? And then, um, the forensic computer forensic part will cover mainly focus on the Windows forensics. So it will cover the like file systems, operating system, and uh, you know offers and uh, uh, registry. So th and uh, as well as like web browsers, okay, web browsers. So those are the basic um, uh, topic we will cover on the about the forensics. Okay, so these are the uh, you know uh, basic about the uh, forensic track. And uh, one thing I would like to talk about is the, uh, you know, the jobs, right? Uh, that's uh, Chrissy wanted us to talk about. So if you have time, you can always go to this um, um, subseek.org, okay? Subseek.org. So, um, and uh, click on the hidden map. So you will be able to see all this information about the current available jobs, okay? Current available jobs. So uh, as you can see, we have about half a million job on field in the United States, okay, for in the cybersecurity area. So we do have a, a large portion that relate to the forensic, right? Like connection, operating, and the investigation, okay? So this is mainly all the forensic, but we do have like other, like A plus, right? A Linux and uh, security plus and step up. So you can also find this, for example, um, analyze, right? And protect and defend, okay? So this, you can find, you, you, you'll find that there are lots of job opportunities there, okay? So um, they are you know, updated lively, okay? Updated lively. Okay, so if you want to know uh, more details about the uh, individual track, you can talk to your instructors and maybe talk to you, uh, you know, the program manager, okay? So um, next, I would like to turn to uh, the next person, right? Maybe Doug Xie, are you there? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, um, so, okay, mm -hmm. I, so I supposed to say something about the yeah, yeah, about system the administration meeting. track? About the system okay. administration, so. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Um, so uh, I'm Meng Jun Xie uh, from University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, and so here I'm an associate professor uh, in computer science. Uh, my background or my research area um, focus on uh, cybersecurity cloud computing, mobile computing, and uh, computer education. Um, so let me um, still share this screen, uh, but I will basically um, <clears throat> just to kind of also follow the similar kind of uh, 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 approach, uh, the approach to talk about the courses in the uh, system administration track. So <clears throat> that's, uh, Dr. Tu already mentioned that we have three core courses that prepare you for um, essentially provide the basic uh, foundational uh, training uh, to uh, be successful at later uh, more advanced courses. So uh, in the system administration track, uh, we have three uh, more advanced courses, advanced level courses. Uh, one is a Linux system administration. Um, we will be using Red Hat Linux. Um, I, I assume that we will be 8.0 or <coughs> maybe 8. Point something. Um, 
so uh, as the kind of practicing environment. Uh, but the knowledge you gained from this course should be applicable in most of the Linux distributions. So please do not uh, feel bad if we do not teach you how to use Ubuntu, right? Uh, because um, those, especially for command line um, tools, um, they are basically uh, universal. Uh, maybe um, there are some minor uh, uh, variations introduced by Red Hat, but most of the Linux command line <clears throat> um, the tools are kind of uh, universal. So um, those should, uh, I hope that will uh, help you uh, uh, a lot in later uh, any uh, uh, courses. And um, <clears throat> The, uh, so it's the mapping certification, I believe it's uh, Red Hat Linux uh, certification. I, I cannot recall the exact name, but uh, um, this course should prepare you well for that uh, examination. The second course um, is uh, uh, 25 Ethical Hacking. <clears throat> this course, we will be using the material from uh, EC Council, Ethical Hacking. Uh, we had uh, we already had a pilot session for Linux system administration, but not for uh, ethical hacking or cloud system administration. So, but uh, based on uh, what Dr. Tu uh, told us, um, that will be based on uh, EC uh, EC Council's content. So uh, that also means um, the material should prepare you well for the EC Council ethical hacking certification. And uh, frankly, I don't know the exact uh, the content, uh, but I believe um, they will. Uh, <clears throat> we once you have their uh, preparation from <coughs> the core courses as well as from the Linux uh, administration, you should have a strong background and uh, uh, skills to complete uh, that course. And then uh, we have uh, the third one is cloud system administration. Uh, and I saw oh, uh, from the chat one uh, participant or one uh, trainee ask about uh, the cloud plus. <laughs> I assume it's come from a company here because they have security plus, the next plus. So I assume that also come from that uh, vendor or company. I didn't know uh, much about that. Um, so um, my, uh, my, uh, Kind of research focus on more on the OpenStack, uh, which is a free and open source uh, cloud platform. So uh, that's the uh, kind of their system I'm most familiar with, and um, so we will be uh, using that as a uh, uh, as the kind of practice platform as well as the teaching uh, uh, target. So we also will touch a little bit um, on, a, on other commercial platforms such as AWS and Google Cloud. So, um, but uh, you uh, essentially, the major common concepts in cloud systems, uh, you, you will learn. And uh, just from the OpenStack, you, uh, those concepts can also be transferred to other cloud systems. So <clears throat> it's not really, although we are using, we will be using one particular system, but uh, the fundamental knowledge uh, should be applicable on other systems. And uh, for that uh, cloud system administration, I am not uh, aware of any uh, particular uh, mapping uh, certificate certification. Uh, maybe there are some, but uh, I'm not quite familiar with that. Um, so uh, that's the basic I, uh, idea for this uh, for this track and. Uh, the website provide a very uh, clear uh, their uh, study plan. Uh, uh, any question or? Okay, uh, then I guess, uh, Professor Tu, uh, I base that's basically what I want to talk about. I think that's. Uh, um, there may be later maybe questions, but uh, uh, um, so far I can see. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I already over. Uh, yeah. Kind of, yeah, close. Okay, that's. So that's Farina, Farina is not here, so maybe no, I, I might. Can you hear me? 
Oh, you're here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. No, I was here. Um, yes, yeah, so I can give an overview of uh, um, the last track, which is the AI track. Let me uh, mention. Can I share my screen? Oh, sure. Sorry. I mean, okay. Yes. All right. So Chrissy has um, helped us build this um, summary and <coughs> use that first. All right, so this is the, the last track, the third track, track, which is uh, artificial intelligence. It also has six courses like the other two tracks uh, Michael and Minjin has dis uh, discussed. Um, so before I go in that, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Parina Sakir. I am an assistant professor at University of North Carolina, <coughs> Charlotte. Um, I have a, a teaching experience um, of uh, seven plus years. I have taught before in uh, Florida Institute of Technology as an assistant professor, and I uh, recently uh, moved to uh, UNC, UNC Charlotte, which is even now is almost four, four plus years. Um, so my research is in hardware security. I have uh, been working in uh, developing security solutions, security primitives that the hardware can provide security to the whole infrastructure at the system level. So it's more like bottom up security. And um, I have uh, worked in the area of IoT security and how the hardware security can support um, the security needs of the ubiquitous devices. So we have one of the courses which I developed in the track of artificial intelligence is um, the IoT and hardware security. So it will be a very interesting course where we will learn in general what the IoT security concerns are. And we will try, try to go over some basics of what uh, are the structures and hardware that can support security and provide state-of-art security without requiring the devices to have uh, password, right? Um, so before we go in the detail of courses, um, this track, uh, like the other tracks, have six courses where the three courses, which are the common among all the three tracks, which all the students will take, A+, plus, Security+, plus, and CyberOps. Um, the specific uh, AI track courses are Python, um, AI machine learning, and IoT and hardware security. So we have um, tried to schedule these courses in three sessions where the students can take uh, two courses uh, and uh, maximum if they're uh, doing uh, track three. Um, or you, the students can take one course per session and then complete, the, uh, and then, uh, uh, complete them on a longer um, timeline. So the first session, which is starting in August, um, we are offering two courses, A+, um, and Python. And uh, Michael has uh, discussed the, the core courses. Um, so the A+, is one of the core courses, and Python Essentials is one of the advanced courses specific for this track. Um, in session two, which will start in October 25th, um, we'll have uh, the course on uh, Security+, Plus and CyberOps. Um, so these two are the core courses. And in January, we will offer the two advanced courses, which are for the specific for the AI track, which is uh, AI machine learning cybersecurity and IoT hardware security. So for hardware security, we have requirement of a prerequisite of Python to be completed before you, the students can enroll uh, or take these classes. So uh, please try to uh, take these courses uh, as they're offered uh, and make sure you read through the prerequisites. And if you have any questions, uh, we'll be happy to um, answer your questions. Now going specifically to the um, advanced courses, um, uh, I, I would like to um, share uh, going back and using the web page um, for, uh, for the course description, which Michael has uh, done a good job in explaining all the courses. I would uh, briefly stop by the, the three uh, the three advanced courses which we have to take for um, the AI track is Python Essentials, um, and it will introduce you with the basics of what the uh, what how to program in Python, uh, discuss how to write the procedures or functions, how to create lists, uh, perform functions like sorting or search. Uh, so the basics of programming will be introduced in the Python Essentials, which will be later on 
use. And so this is recommended for uh, the courses of machine learning, which is the, uh, the advanced class for the track AI. In that track, this is a very interesting uh, course uh, where you will learn state-of-art machine learning concepts. Uh, we will go through uh, the definitions, what uh, artificial intelligence is, what machine learning is, and different types of machine learning, uh, such as uh, classification, uh, deep learning, and unsupervised machine learning. So you will have a good understanding of machine learning. This is um, really a, a much needed skill for, for today's um, te technology, everyone talks about machine learning. I'm, I'm, I, I believe that in your experience in uh, military or uh, you know, uh, the first responders, you might have heard about the uh, machine, learning, machine learning. Even um, the kids nowadays talk about machine learning. So it, it's a very interesting course to have. Um, we have Matthew here. He can also answer some specifics about this course. Um, and then the third course, um, is uh, IoT and hardware security, which is CWCT 250 class. I'm sorry, it's not uh, selecting this properly. Um, so in this class, um, we will have a combination of what the IoT in general, oh, what is this new paradigm of IoT devices? These are resource constrained, constrained small devices that have limited computation power but how do we integrate security on top of it? So we'll talk about the communication level security. We will have some labs on packet tracer, which have already been discussed uh, previously by Matthew. Um, we'll talk about uh, the concepts of hardware security and how, how they can be applied on IoT. So this will be a very interesting and one of a kind class. Um, and we will uh, try to have more support if needed uh, in terms of uh, understanding the labs. Uh, one of the questions which was asked earlier whether the classes will have project. Um, so for this particular class, the labs will be connected. So you can think of that a project is broken down into smaller labs. So we can incrementally learn through the concepts. And then the, at the end of the day, it, it, it is almost like a project that you can, if you if you need, I mean, I, I always ask my students to, you can put them, list them as projects you did in your resume. Um, so I, I think that's about that's about it, Michael. Um, you can stop sharing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any question from the? No. No. Um, Farina, could you talk about any specific jobs that somebody could get with the AI track once they complete it? Um, so AI, there are many job opportunities. Um, um, if we will be introducing with the skills, uh, I can speak from the um, IoT and hardware security. We'll be going through some skills like how to write hardware using VHDL. And there are several opportunities um, that, um, that are, for example, Silicon Valley, Intel, um, uh, company vendors like Xilinx, um, Cisco. So many of my graduate students um, they have been hired by Qualcomm, Apple, um, Intel. So these are definitely uh, opportunities. And if the students are interested specifically uh, you know, in AI track, uh, machine learning is one of the hot areas. Um, so having that skill um, and making, which Rami will be uh, covering in the next session, what are the opportunities in industry? Uh, we will be working out specifically for the graduates from this certificate program, how to can do a, a well connect them um, to these companies. I just want to add to that, um, that in AI, there's been a major shift in the past year that most of the traditional machine learning AI has been going to those who have a bachelor's or a graduate degree up to this point, really focusing on those who have more of the statistical analysis. And there's still a need for that, a tremendous need for it. And AWS is having a, um, uh, within the AWS Academy courses we're using in the, in the AI course, there's also job placement. They were saying it's gonna come at the end of the year, but actually I'm, I'm seeing it in the courses right now uh, so that you can get tied into those employers. But what's happening in the shift of it is that you don't have to know all that stuff to get a job in AI. You have to know how do you apply it. Do you know how to build um, relationships? Do you know how to train people, right? And then understanding enough about the AI and machine learning technology to say, I can put these components and pieces together, just like with 
Simba chain that we have listed there is a blockchain technology to encrypt. You could use it for logistics. If you know about transportation, maybe you're working in supply in, in the army and you know how that works really well, but hey, how do, how do we do that? Or we can say, I'm gonna get these parts for making a tank, but I don't want somebody in China to know what we're doing, right? Or in Iran or wherever it might be from, we can encrypt that using Simba chain you don't have to know anything about programming to make that work at this point. You just have to know how to build the relationships. And then where it gets into stuff that you don't necessarily know uh, the technical details, well, some of that Python programming is going to happen to help. That's why we have that there. But you might need to go on to someone else. But the vast majority of the work we're expecting, uh, the National Science Foundation is expecting 123 million jobs by 2024 that are using AI to enhance enhance your job, right? And that's going, to, it, that's going to replace 75 million jobs. It's still a growth in jobs, but growth in jobs of people who are embracing AI technology. And that's what we're focusing on, not trying to get you to be a stats major. If you come out and you decide you want to, that would be awesome, but that's, that's not the goal of this course. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Rami, would you like to introduce our special guest? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rami. I'm an assistant professor at VTech. I'm a program chair of cybersecurity for Valbraza campus. I would like to, actually, I'm honored today. Uh, today is a special day for us. Uh, if you're in the U.S. Coast Guard, today is the U.S. Coast Guard uh, birthday, it's 131. And today I have the honor to introduce uh, retired Captain Glenn Herndon. He is the chief information security officer, United States chief information security officer for the United States Coast Guard. He also have multiple titles and multiple positions, but I'm going to save the time and ask uh, Glenn to introduce himself. Go ahead, Glenn. No, thank you, Rami. And uh, actually, I can just sit and uh, listen to Matthew Cloud talk all day. He's He's got the right context in terms of uh, what we're all trying to seek, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, retired from the Coast Guard, it's been uh, a tremendous pleasure to serve the country in the various positions as an engineer as an administrator, as a CISO of the Coast Guard. But what I really enjoyed was working with the team and the people um, on worthy missions. And, and that's what I think ultimately what we're trying to seek is, you know, uh, I, I see three A's here. Uh, do you have the aptitude? Do you have the attitude? And can you adapt these skills to really meet what organizations are really trying to seek uh, to in their goals and their missions to achieve? And that's where the difficulty is with uh, the really lack of people uh, to serve in all these uh, highly needed positions. Um, do, do you really want to take on challenges that, that the nation really uh, is trying to overcome right now? And, and so that's where I see a lot of opportunities is, is in these folks uh, like you that, that really have these three A's that really want to go after these things, but you really have to, uh, like Matthew said, be able to apply um, the things that you'll learn through these programs will give you a fantastic foundation in, in the multiple technical disciplines, but ultimately it's up to you as to how you're going to apply it. But that's a quick snapshot, Rami. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions in the time we got left. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, we want to start asking the student if they have any questions about finding job in the government sectors and private sectors. Of course, uh, uh, Captain uh, Hernandez not only just a retired captain, but he's also uh, one of the, he's actually on the United States Subcommittee for Cybersecurity for AFSIA, and he also managed also, he's a judge for Shark Tank. He have a lot of industry experience in consulting. So if you have any questions, we're covering here government, public, and private sectors here. Anybody have any questions? While we're waiting, uh, waiting for some questions, Rami, I just want to put out a couple of things uh, that the nation's been really uh, trying to improve on is really trying to create these jobs for the future. And with the creation of the National Cyber Director led by Chris Inglis, you know, he's going to be having workforce as a major component of his agenda within uh, his job for the country. And so there's thoughts of a digital service academy. Uh, very similar to the military service academies that they're trying to create to uh, uh, have a formation of uh, expertise and talent that's really going to propel the country uh, to take on the challenges of the future. And then also the Department of Energy has a robust program uh, called CyberForce. Uh, it's a competition that uh, folks may be interested. Uh, there's also the US Cyber Games that's going on right now um, to try and attract uh, talent uh, into really uh, CTFs that, that uh, capture the flag type 
uh, programs, and that's a competition that's going to be happening in December in Athens, Greece. Uh, but there's a lot of momentum in the country because uh, we really need uh, to develop the capacity and understand we're not going to fill all the jobs. And so I, I think there's going to be uh, some uh, really uh, understanding what can we do with automation, but ultimately uh, people and teams are, are going to have to be in critical places uh, to move the country forward. And that's a good point. Thank you, Glenn, for mentioning that one. Actually, me, myself, and, and, and actually Glenn was a former direct, national director for U.S. Cyber Challenge. And this is how we met there. And uh, this is really, it's the whole United States. Just recently, IV Tech sponsored the Eastern Boot Camps. We have about 25 states. And we actually, one of our students actually, she came in second in the nation, actually. Two students came in second in the nation. So very proud of them and going to the Cyber Bowl in Washington, D.C. in October. Uh, Glenn, you want to talk about experience with your cyber challenge and why this will enhance student opportunity for finding jobs in the field? No, absolutely. Thanks, Rami. What, what I learned about cyber challenge is that th there's talent everywhere, right? And if you were able to expose uh, just an opportunity uh, of what the breadth and the depth of these opportunities look like to people, it'd be amazing to see uh, what people can see in these things. I, as I went through this challenge, folks that had no clue that they could get into cybersecurity, they were exposed just for a couple of days to see what created uh, creative talent could be applied, and that it's not any one discipline, uh, because like I said before, it's all about a team uh, trying to take on these challenges, and they need talent from all different disciplines uh, to really overcome the, the problems that we have. So think about it like uh, solving a puzzle. And, and so I found the folks that were really out of the box thinkers uh, that could think around problems in ways that others uh, couldn't really see through and then apply the things that they had learned technically or through their education to solve problems. I thought that was amazing to see uh, during my time uh, on the US Cyber Challenge. Absolutely. So there are some questions in the chat um, if, if I we can ask them. Um, and, and these either, Glenn, I don't know if you would be the one answering these or, or the, the staff of CWCT. So the first one is, where would most of us start if we were able to find work after completion of this program? What types of roles or environments would we be most suited for? Yeah, I get that question a lot, and, and there's so many resources out there. One of the things I, I thought was very effective uh, was networking, because when you uh, were able to um, uh, network with a group of people that uh, somewhat have similar skills or uh, similar things that you like, they're able to identify things that you may not have realized, the job opportunities, uh, because there are so many out there. It's trying to, uh, to narrow down what exactly uh, fits within your interests. And then just starting there through networking and identifying what really calls to you as an individual and, and apply uh, your, with your experiences, background, and your interests uh, to really go after. And, and one thing about government is that uh, authority is a major difference between government and industry. Uh, whereas industry may have the opportunities and maybe the money and, and the jobs, the authorities to actually go after some of these difficult problems that the nation is trying to overcome really only come from those jurisdictions or organizations that have the authority to solve or go after these things that are that are harming us. Thanks. Um, so one of the next question is, which area is in most need of computer cybersecurity employees, private or government? And are most available jobs related to identifying and diverting possible attacks on our infrastructure? Yeah, that's an easy one for me, all of them. <laughs> every, every organization I'm hearing from industry, I'm um, hearing it from government, and, and really even nonprofits, right, need help because uh, those are the ones that really small uh, organizations, small companies that have have few resources, they're the ones who need advice. And so um, CISA and uh, local organizations uh, like law enforcement are trying to create networks. Uh, some of them are through universities. Uh, so I heard of uh, cybersecurity clinics. All right, where folks can get advice uh, because there are so many problems out there, and and with. Just in the people's uh, questions I can hear today, you know, they have a sense of what some of the problems are out there. The challenge is, right, can you I, 
identify as those opportunities that they can really uh, work for and, and fits within their interests. And in some cases, it's not always about the money, it's, uh, it's about the opportunity and the authority. Thank you. Um, this is a, a combination of comment slash question. Um, it seems like there are many government essential service organizations, police, hospitals, electrical systems, et cetera. Are these organizations actively trying to improve their systems so they are not so easily broken into and ransomed in that same track when the biggest risk in these systems yeah. is employees themselves? I feel like education amongst the general public is going to be essential. No, that's a great question. And I don't think anyone intentionally wants to see the organizations fails. Uh, a lot of times, and even in the Coast Guard with uh, over 80,000 with volunteers and active duty and civilian, a lot of times it comes down to leadership, right? Can leadership actually embrace a culture of security to meet their operations safely and securely? And, and it really comes from the top of the leaders of those organizations. And you as advisors can really be uh, those force, forcing drivers to help organizations improve. And with uh, some of the skills and experience, and, and a lot of times uh, we're not going to have the resident knowledge uh, or skills to solve the problems directly. And that's why I think networking and relationships and partnerships are so important in, in solving these problems. So I, I think everybody has an opportunity to uh, pitch in and help. It's just identifying where do they want to uh, you know, start. Absolutely, I agree with Glenn. And also I'd like to add, uh, one of my former students actually, he was my undergrad and grad student once upon a time and currently work for the police department. He's an adjunct and he's gonna be actually teaching for us here in the NSA program, uh, the CHFI uh, forensic course. And the way he started, John, John Lawrence, when he started, was my undergraduate student and a graduate student back then. And uh, he actually get involved. He joined the FBI InfoGuard. We went to a lot of government meeting and he was able to get special training and was exposed to a lot of scholarship and it's really something you could benefit from. Uh, also, I recommend that like uh, uh, Captain Hernandez, he mentioned the fact that if you participate in the cybersecurity competition, that will actually expose you to a national um, uh, organization where you can contribute and get some scholarship. Uh, part of the US, uh, US Cyber Challenge, we actually student have a voucher worth thousands of dollars, free training, free voucher, take this professional certification like CISSB and so on and so forth. We also have a lot of uh, vendors came in and give scholarships. And also we have at one point, remember in 2015, we actually have a vice president of the United States actually met with the student who did the USCC, Cyber Patriots and all the cyber competitions, CCDC, National Cyber in CCDC. They, was inv they were invited to the White House and this was really big honors and met with generals and admirals and so on and so forth in our nation. Of course, not to mention Microsoft and Google, the private sectors also. Glenn, you want to add something to that? Yeah. So Rami, I, I just wanted to mention something that I also experienced, um, maybe some of the veterans here also experienced, that volunteerism is actually a great way to learn uh, about what's going on in the community and, and how to get involved. And I know we're over time, I'd be happy to answer questions afterwards. Uh, I can give you my contact information. But you know, through, through volunteerism, you accomplish a couple things. You, you show interest, you help out an organization that may want your help, and then you can also potentially seek opportunities that you may not have realized uh, through those. I, I volunteer for all kinds of organizations all the time because uh, I really want to give back uh, that way, but um, it, it's just a way to start. So I, I think all of you that are even here today, that shows that you have at least the, uh, the attitude to even start somewhere. So I congratulate you for taking that step, but good luck with the program and I look forward to seeing your progress in the future. One of the questions, Glenn, is are you on LinkedIn? I am, Glenn Hernandez. Semper Paratus uh, is, uh, is, my, uh, is my name on LinkedIn. Thanks. But you can see me under Glenn Hernandez. Oh, it looks like uh, Rami uh, put the link forward in, in the um, chat for them, so. All right, thanks, thanks Rami. Now, this has Thank been you. a pleasure. I, I appreciate the time and good luck to everybody on your program. Thank you for sharing your time with us, Glenn. Really appreciate it. I know you're very busy these days. Thank you. And today is a special day. Happy birthday today. The United States Coastal Guard. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, it looks like people are still kind of cruising through chat a little bit. Um, I don't think, I think everybody's questions got answered. If for whatever reason your question didn't get answered, um, feel free to shoot an email to your program manager um, or Chrissy or I, since we've been in touch with you guys the most at this point. But we hope that you got a lot of good information out of this session and got some good ideas about potential job opportunities in the future. And uh, we just want to thank you all for taking the time and, and meeting with us tonight. And Amber, I asked this privately in the chat. Um, you're going to save the actual chat to send as well, correct? Yep. So we'll save the chat so you'll have all the links in there. And then um, hopefully by Friday, we'll have the video cleaned up, you know, take out any tech things that didn't go quite right and throw that into YouTube and that that link will be sent out to everybody as well. The link, the chat, and then um, again, the PowerPoint, PowerPoint will be sent out um, as well as I know um, with some of the smaller font, it might've been hard for you guys to see on your screen. So you'll have it so that you can refer back to it as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.